driving a Tesla Model S to a wind tunnel in an undisclosed location to measure the drag and lift on a group of cars, including this Tesla. There are only a few wind tunnels suitable for this type of work, most of which are controlled by car makers. So we're not disclosing the location or name of our wind tunnel, but you'll have to trust us that it's a reputable, modern location with uh, experts who've got uh, decades of experience in this field. Besides the Tesla, our field of aero competitors includes the Toyota Prius, Nissan Leaf, and Chevrolet Volt. These are all hybrid or pure electric cars for which low drag is crucial to their touted economy. The one car in our selection with a gas-only powertrain, the Mercedes-Benz CLA 250, is included because of assertions from the manufacturer that it's a production vehicle aero benchmark, so we're expecting it to be very competitive in this group as well. Any car's aerodynamic efficiency is measured by drag area. To determine that, a photograph is first taken of the front of the vehicle. We place a camera 150 feet away, equipped with a very long zoom lens to minimize the effects of perspective. A yardstick is placed at the base of the windshield as a scaling reference. A precise outline of the car is acquired, and the area of the image is determined using CAD software. This gives us the maximum cross-sectional area from the car's front. The part of drag area that's determined inside the wind tunnel is the actual drag coefficient. That's a dimensionless number that quantifies the slipperiness of the shape. So the end result drag area is the drag coefficient times the frontal area of the vehicle. Airflow uh, out in the real world is complicated enough. When you go into a laboratory environment like a wind tunnel, uh, you can get interactions between the vehicle and the wind tunnel. Some wind tunnels are better than others, uh, none are perfect. Uh, the results change even though the intent is the same. It's kind of like what makes one race engine superior to another. There are a hundred factors. Uh, if we're talking about splitting hairs, uh, different tunnels will give different results. Still, I was confident that testing each of these five cars in the same tunnel would negate the design of the actual tunnel as a factor, at least in obtaining a ranking order. Our ranking order turned out to be fifth place, Nissan Leaf. Fourth place, Mercedes-Benz CLA 250. Third place, Chevrolet Volt. Above third place, we had a very close finish for drag area. Both the Toyota Prius and the Tesla Model S scored nearly identically, with the Tesla showing a very slight advantage. Because the Model S manages a lower drag coefficient and thus achieves nearly the same drag area despite a larger frontal area, we gave the win to the Tesla. As we see it, the design of the Tesla Model S is the aero benchmark of this group. This car's ride height drops automatically at highway speeds to diminish the face to the wind. Shutters at the front remain closed until cooling flow is required, and the contoured chin keeps air from detaching as it flows under the car. Air below the waistline is either cleanly routed around the wheel wells or underneath, down the length of the car, to a diffuser at the rear. The Tesla may not be quite as aerodynamically slick as some of the bullet-shaped experimental prototypes to come along within the last few decades, but unlike those cars, it's practical, drivable, and can actually be sold in volume to the public.